Hello, everyone, and welcome to Total Football Talk. I'm Anthony. And I'm Eric. And my rear end is still sore. That sounded really bad. Um, <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, Ramily, um, the season's over, uh, and what can I say? I have lots to say. Um, this format's going to be a little unique in the sense that there's only one game to cover. So we're going to do our analysis on what we saw in the game and break it down, give credit where credit's due. I want to thank you, the fans right off the bat before we even get started. I've had some great subscribers. I've had some really great, I've had some really good new ones. I've got great old, we've got great old subscribers and we just really appreciate the input that you guys give and the passion that you give. I know a lot of us in the Ram, in the Ramily are crushed. There's no other way to put it, but I'll put a little bit of a, of a positive spin on it at the end and, um, you know, to quote the Brooklyn Dodgers, wait till next year. So, Eric, Patriots 13, Rams 3, Super Bowl 53. Take it away. Well, let's start out with something positive. Uh, I thought defense was at an all-time high. Loved it. I loved watching defense. I loved watching to see who was going to uh, break on the defense event first. And, and to tell you the truth, the Rams didn't break on defense. There was a great catch by Gronkowski to get him down to the one-yard line for the first time for anybody to be in the red zone in the fourth quarter. In this day and age of football, it is unheard of. Yeah. Listen, I, I know in, in uh, one of the shows leading up to, you know, the preview, I, you know, I mentioned, um, you know, the Bears provided a blueprint and the Eagles provided a blueprint on how to uh, defend Aaron Donald. And Donald, yes, he, he was he was quick, he was fast, he missed a couple of tackles in the backfield, uh, missed getting to Brady a couple times. Um and he was still he was still forced. He still had the game plan around him, but they did a really good job of blocking him. Uh, I did see one uh, Nadamakong Sue break through the lines. He looked like a raging bull coming through, ready to smash Tom Brady into seven thousand pieces. And then Rex Burkhead decides to stick his shoulder in there to slow him down. I'm like, dude, sure if I I bought a god off a wave, let my quarterback take it. But yeah, I mean it, that big of a game, holy cow! Like yeah. Rex Burkhead, I mean I, I tip my hat to you for sticking your nose in there. And he, you know, he kind of knocks you a little bit. I don't want to say off balance um, because he had a lot of momentum going forward. But he, but he kind of. Uh, prevented him from getting any closer and, and that allowed Brady to get his pass off. Um, you know, as far as defense goes, uh, defense was championships and, you know, there was, there was a bad pass by Brady, his first pass of the game that was uh, tipped up and picked off. It was, you know, it was a good play by Roby Coleman and another good uh, play by the Ram linebacker to catch the ball. Um, 
and sometimes depending on when the turnover is can be even worse for a team. I, I really thought, you know, the Rams, um, you know, when you get a turnover on the first possession, my, my immediate thought is, well, you just wasted the opening kickoff, and now we got the ball, but then you go three and out, and it's like, oh, man, like, you know the, you know the Patriots are going to try to uh, work the clock in for a while. The Rams only had 51 seconds of time of possession, and it was just like, this is astounding. Um, and then Goff throws a pick in the fourth quarter, and it's like, that's the dagger right there. Yeah, Brady's pick could have went for six, um, and the Rams would have been up, but you know, how would that game have turned differently? Would they still have gotten that 13 points? Would it have been a 13-10 game? We don't know. Um, so I think timing of turnovers is, um, you know, it can be it can be said a lot, especially a momentum changer. <sighs> Special teams, let's go there uh, second. Uh, there was an NFL record set. Congrats to Johnny Hecker, 65-yard punt, longest in Super Bowl history by a yard. Uh, I think the however many times he punted, I expected a, a, a fake punt each time. Like, all right, when's the fake punt coming? When's the fake punt coming? And it never happened. Um, I don't know if it just wasn't the right time, the, the, the Rams just didn't work more close enough or what it was, or if if, uh, if McVay just didn't want to uh, test it and be like, okay, if we lose it, you know, we're going to be stuck in our own territory. I don't know. Uh, I guess flow dictates the game. But, you know, the Rams needed some kind of spark. They just didn't get it. And you can tell the difference between the two head coaches because the uh, when it was 10-3, to 3, uh, the – uh, the, the Patriots had fourth in an index card, what seemed. And, you know, Bill Belichick went for it uh, with a field goal, and Guskowski barely put it in, but he still got it in, put up 10 points. It really pretty much sealed the deal for the, for the game. Um, and then uh, I think McVay, if the, if, the, if the roles were reversed, McVay definitely would have went for it. He would have been like, Goff, take it, and um, all you need is uh, just a hair length, and let's see the game, and, and we'll we'll go we'll win this game by touchdown, and not let them get the ball back. I think it's hilarious that um, that both Guskowski and Zerline missed field goals, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because uh, you know kickers were perfect in Atlanta this year, um, but not not in the Super Bowl. So you know, a couple of miscues here and there, two turnovers, the one by each side, one missed field goal by each team. Let's get to the offense. Um, I thought the Rams offense was putrid. I thought it stunk. Uh, it, it's amazing that a team could score 32.9 points uh, per game in the regular season and muster three points in the, uh, in the, in the biggest game of stage. Were there nerves? Who knows? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of reports that the Rams were really loose leading up to uh, taking off for Atlanta and, and going through everything. Um, and you had two weeks to prepare for one of the brightest coaches in all of football history and three points is all you could muster up. I don't care what anybody says. Todd Gurley's hurt. I don't care that his MRI came that clean. You're going to hear within a, uh, within a few weeks that Todd Gurley's going under the knife for, for a knee scope or something. It, it, it's bound to happen. You're going to hear about it and it's not going to be that shocking of news. You're just going to hear that it'll be ready for OTAs. That's it. Maybe a simple procedure, clean up, whatever, but something something has to happen. Uh, but I don't think rest is going to be enough because if two weeks are going to get you to being explosive to the back that we're all used to seeing Ty Gurley, something's definitely wrong. Um, and it's not mental. There's no way that it's mental for, for him, no matter how much they use or didn't use him in the playoffs. Um, C.J. Anderson had a couple of good runs, I thought, uh, to, to break through the, the first wave of Patriots defenders, but uh, he was pretty much bottled up, so that just left everything on Goff. And <clears throat> Goff's got a lot of growing up to do. I just, I, I just think he could have played a lot better. Uh, the Patriots defense lost Patrick Chung late in the game, and I, yeah, I know the Rams tried to take advantage of, or the uh, yeah, the Rams tried to take advantage of that with a pass to Brandon Cooks, but you know McCourty made a nice play on defense to break it up. Um, the pass didn't look like the greatest to me either. Yeah, I saw some wildly passes from both quarterbacks, uh, a couple more from from Goff, but um, I mean, three points in the Super Bowl. I mean, the Dolphins once scored three points in the Super Bowl, and and 
you know, there's a lot of people out there tolling the Rams after the Super Bowl. Well, guess what? The Rams got to the Super Bowl and you didn't. So don't even talk to me about, uh, oh, you know, the Rams can only score three points. And Michael Thomas was the biggest instigator along with Ted Ginn Jr. Like, oh, oh uh, you know, uh, uh, you guys only scored three points? How could you only score three points? Well, I'll tell you what. You didn't score any points for the Super Bowl. So I don't want to hear it. And your best chance of getting to a Super Bowl is going to be next year. And it ain't going to happen, Michael Thomas. So you can take that and shove it where the sun don't shine. Uh, so stop talking and, and have your play do the talking. Because I guarantee you, you lost the Super Bowl too. No matter if you scored three points or 100 points, it don't matter. Uh, the Rams didn't have a lot of work to do. Um, I could go off and, and, uh, and, and just downright have a rant uh, on Goff and McVay and do it. Rams offside or whatnot. But, do it, Eric. But I'm not gonna, but I'm, no, I'm not going to do it. I, you know, you told me yesterday you were on another show and – and uh, everybody's saying to trade Goff. You're, you're an idiot if you think you need to trade Goff, okay? And I know you might have got to that, Anthony, but seriously, you don't trade Goff, your starting quarterback, who even got you to the Super Bowl. Because if it wasn't for Goff uh, playing well in the playoffs, you wouldn't be there. Yeah. You know, were they helped by crap um, head coaching by the other team? Yes. Yes, they were. I will rip on Sean Payton till the day I die for that game, Okay. But today's the last day you're going to hear it because tomorrow starts a new season. Yeah. All right? So, if, with, with that being said, uh, you know, I, I love the way Ray Phillips disguised his defense against Brady. So, I'm going to go back to defense here in a little bit, uh, for, for a little bit. You know, Wade Phillips did a great job. And I know you even mentioned, you know, who gives Brady fits? Wade Phillips' defenses. And they have. Edward did it. Um, the Rams did it. And, you know, the, the Patriots adjusted. They got the ball battle. I mean, they could have thrown the ball battle in on every single play. That's how that's how uh, how wide open he was getting and, and how much of a good game he was having. The one call, I said this in my preview, okay, and, and I'm glad it came true that the refs did not overtake this game. Now, proud of that fact, okay, um, the only call that I did not agree with was the first flag of the game yep. where uh, they, they called Dante Fowler Jr. For, for the penalty, but it was actually Roby Coleman, and then he hit him right after Burke had caught the ball. And it's like, oh, that's a personal foul. I'm like, how is that a personal foul? He caught the ball. You know, if you let them make a football move, he's going to blow right past you. Yeah. Okay? Hit the guy with the ball right when it hits his hands. That's not pass interference. You know, you see that all the time. A guy's about to catch a ball. Hits his fingertips. Gets knocked upside down. They don't call that. He's not a defenseless, he's not a defensive, defenseless receiver. Okay? I don't care if it's a screen pass. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay? So that, to me, that to me was a horse crap call. It, could it have changed the time again? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Because the Patriots would have been in third and long. Second long, third long, and probably would have punted from inside the 30 yard line. And who knows if the Rams would have been able to move down the field or whatnot. Uh, could have changed the whole outcome of the game. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, you're not, you're not really going to change the whole outcome of the game when you only score three points. And I understand what the Rams tried to do at the end of the game by kicking the field goal yeah, and yeah. kicking the outside pick. I get it. Okay? But when you miss the field goal, I mean, all hope is lost. Mm hmm. Well, and it did matter because if they scored a touch, if they went for the touchdown, their time would have run out. Oh yeah, easily. You, easily. you, you that was actually I thought McVeigh's best bit of coaching. Um, you know, and I'll tell you, there's a few things. Is are you are you good? Can I go for, or do you still want to say a little bit more? You said you want to touch on defense. Yeah, I touched. Uh, I touched on defense. Um, I mean. <laughs> How how much how much more can you go in and and, and rip on the offense and, and mm -hmm. Goff and McVay and and running backs and whatnot? I, I thought that uh, I thought that Woods and, and uh, Cooks could have had a better game, but you know when when everything seems like there's 22 guys on defense on the Patriots, there's really no room to throw the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um I'm proud of the Ramley. I'm proud of the way the Rams reacted. Um, on Cooks dropped touchdown at the end of the game the play just before the interception um that was about as obvious of a pass interference penalty as you're going to get um but i understand the ref not calling it um i understand he could have been blocked and maybe it wasn't as clear as the championship game penalty but i did think it was ironic 
And almost in a way, it's a good thing because it shows the character of the Ram fan as opposed to the character of the Saints fan. That would have put it first and goal at the one-yard line in a 10-3 a ball game. Okay, and if anybody in this listening to this podcast doesn't believe the Rams punched in from the one yard line, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Instead, they didn't call pass interference. And then Sean McVay unthinkably calls the exact same play on third down. And I the interception by Goff irritates me because it never should have been. It never should have been. You do not call the same exact play two plays in a row in high school, let alone against Bill Belichick. Now, me and Eric have a different opinion on this. Eric and I had a little bit of a, I I guess you could say heated, um, because I was emotional. Um, I understand why Eric wants to put a lot of the blame on Goff. I can understand why a lot of people are thinking about putting the blame on Goff. As a coach, um, we did not see Sean McVay in this game. Um, As I told you, Eric, or I might have mentioned on another show, Jeff Fisher body snatched Sean McVay prior to the game because that was Jeff Fisher's offense that we saw last night. And, you know, Jeff, you had made the comment that the Rams were winning with guys you drafted. This is what the Rams would have done in the Super Bowl if you were our coach if we were even good enough to get there, which we wouldn't have been. So I don't want to hear that. I don't know why no one on McVay's staff stopped him and went, what are you doing? We're really going to go in with run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, pass, pass. Like, that's really going to be our philosophy? Did no one... And then the other thing that bothered me, okay, and again... Goff was put in horrible situations all game long. If Tom Brady had this game plan, the Rams would have won 13-3. to Or maybe they would be in overtime playing a 3-3 game at this point. Because you just can't function with it. You're calling the play up until the 15 seconds are up. Now Goff has five seconds to relay that to the team and line the offense up. By the time the Patriots are set, he's got five seconds to either snap the ball or call timeout. There is no time to audible. So you are stuck with what McVay wanted you to run. You have no way to get out of it. Because to call the audible, have the line communicate it, make sure everyone's got it articulated, and then set up, you're going to get a delay game penalty. I did not see any up-tempo offense. You know what? You completed a pass for five yards, run up to the line of scrimmage and hurry it up. What's it going to hurt? I just, I didn't understand the play calling. I didn't. And the whole time I'm sitting there going, let Goff loose. Let him go. Take the diapers off of your quarterback. And he never did. He never did. So in my opinion... Goff never had an opportunity to get into the rhythm of this game because his head coach stymied him every every step of the way. Um, Now, that being said, the pass to Cooks in the end zone that he missed where Cooks was wide open, that's on him. Missing the running back when he threw it downfield when the back was wide open on the the flare, that's on him. Missing... um, Robert Woods on the deep in and trying to go with the with the with the vertical deep ball to uh, I believe Brandon Cooks again. That's on him. The interception, I'm not putting on him. You put him in a horrible position. It was a crap throw, but so I guess it's half and half, right? Um I, the other thing that bothered me in a conversation is I won't mention the individual But they said to, um, you know, that they didn't want to hear about a Jared Goff moment. We didn't have a Jared Goff moment. You're absolutely right. We didn't have a Jared Goff moment in the Super Bowl. But I'm not taking away what he did for us in the championship game. That's like telling John Elway, we're not counting the drive because you got beat by 
the Giants 39 to 20 in the Super Bowl and you look like crap in the second half. We're not going to give you the outstanding 1989 AFC Championship game performance because you look like dog crap in Super Bowl 24 against the 49ers. He had his moment. He didn't have another moment, but I feel like he had his moment last week or last game. This game, he was he was a liability, yes, but I'm not putting it all on him. Yes, Jared has to throw the football, as somebody said to me in a reply to a comment that I was making on one of the NFL Network video clips. That's 100% true. Goff is the one throwing the football, and he wasn't delivering on time. But as a coach, when I'm putting you in predictable passing situations against the greatest defensive coach in the history of professional football and one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game, what chance am I really giving Goff to be successful? That's like dropping back to throw the ball and calling all verts against the 85 Bears. You're asking for your quarterback to go on a stretcher. You're just an idiot. So I was so upset that we didn't get to see the Rams offense. I don't know what the hell I was being forced to watch for four quarters, but it wasn't what I've seen for two and a half years. Two years. Um, so I was irritated with that. And I, I'm going to put a lot of the blame on McVay, but I will put some of the blame on Goff. But I also want to reiterate something that Prime said. I've really grown to love Deion Sanders. Maybe because the man has no stake in the game, he just recognizes greatness, and yes, he goes over the top about Tom Brady, and that's fine. But you know what? The man has been wrong all year long. The man has been... He said the Patriots would, would win the Super Bowl when they were friggin' struggling at whatever they were, 6-5, and 7-5, and five, whatever it was, 7-4, and 8-4. and four. Um, And everyone's like, what's wrong with the Patriots? And he's like, nothing. They got Tom Brady. They'll be fine. They got Belichick. They'll be fine. And he was right. He picked them every every step of the way in the postseason, and he picked them to beat the Rams. But what Dion said about the Rams, I really appreciate. And that is that they just weren't ready. They're young. You know, you talk about, well, Anthony, there's no excuse for that. We're in the Super Bowl. We got to be ready. There's something to be said. If we were playing the Chiefs, I believe we win the Super Bowl. If we're playing the Chargers, sorry, MM forever, I believe we win the Super Bowl. But you're talking about a quarterback who's been to nine of these things against a kid that's never been to a single one. Okay, it's not like we're playing a quarterback that was playing in his second Super Bowl and still trying to you know, lament his, his, his position in the all-time great quarterbacks. This dude's been to nine of these things. The head coach, he's been to, uh, let's see, nine, 10, 11, 12 Super Bowls as a coordinator and a coach. The man's been coaching 10 years longer than Sean McVay's been alive. He's been in the NFL for 43 years. Sean McVay turns 33. So for me... There was a little bit of a reality when I was talking to my wife about putting this in perspective. There has never been this big of an experience gap between two teams in the history of sports. Forget NFL. And that means something. Clearly, in preparation, in the way you game plan, in the way you play. I think McVay game planned scared of of Bill Belichick. I also think McVay made a lot of mistakes in pregames, in the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. You don't tell Bill Belichick what your focus of the game is going to be. You don't tell Bill Belichick you're going to come out and run the ball and then come out and run the ball. You basically gave them the videotape without them needing to film you this time around. That's right. I went there. Um, you know, you know, really quick, Anthony, mm-hmm. um, as long as Bill Belichick is still the head coach, 
when somebody asks the opposing uh, Super Bowl contender from the other conference, hey, what's your plan for the Super Bowl? We're going to run the ball. We're going to pass the ball. We're going to play football. And, and every now and then, we're also going to kick the ball. And hopefully those are field goals. Or That's extra it. points. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand it. Like, if somebody had asked me that, I would have turned around and said, why, are you going to call Bill Belichick and give him this information? Or, oh, he's watching. Or, or, or take your third string or fourth string running back and say, yeah, we're going to run him into the ground. <laughs> right? You know, I, I just, I don't understand what McVay's thinking was. And I'm not even going to fault Belichick. You talk about taking advantage of somebody's youth and inexperience. You know, they said they were texting buddies. He texted them after every game. How much information do you think McVay gave Bill Belichick over the course of the year in the event that they were their opponent? It's, uh, it's interesting to wonder. It's, it's, it's something to ponder. Um, mm -hmm. Now, yes, I'm going to put some blame on Goff, but I'm not going to put the entire blame on Jared Goff. And I'm telling you as a Ram fan, I'm going to go on a limb and say this, and, uh, and I'm, I, I know you're going to disagree with me, Eric. He is the best quarterback we've had in my lifetime as a Rams fan. Now, I know that Kurt Warner won a Super Bowl. I know that Kurt Warner never put up just three points in a Super Bowl, but I remind people we were down 17-3 in the fourth quarter. So let's not act like that game wasn't getting away from us. Now, he figured it all out, and Goff didn't. But, you know, there, there, there's, there's a lot of similarities between these two quarterbacks. The difference is he didn't have to wait till so late in life to really prove himself. McV you know, I think Goff has a chip on his shoulder and a lot to prove, and this offseason is only going to be more of it. Because whether it's people in the Ramley overreacting and saying we need to trade Jared Goff, who are you going to trade him for? You really want to roll with Sean Mannion? Is that your plan? Or are you planning on getting that kid from Oklahoma that's probably going to end up going and playing Major League Baseball? Is that your game plan? And wh wh who are you going to trade him for? You think the Chiefs are going to give up Patrick Mahomes? By the way, I remind you, Mahomes didn't get to the Super Bowl. Jared Goff did. Just going to put that out there. I think we've got ourselves a really good quarterback. I think we got ourselves a really good coach. I don't know what the future holds. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to wrap long, up my Super Bowl. As long as, as long as Goff does not look like Dieter Brock in the, a in the NFC Championship game, you guys should be okay. Yeah, well, he kind of looked like Dieter Brock in the Super Bowl. I'll just tell you that right now. He looked like freaking Tony Eason for a minute. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but, but again, to be fair... You know, it's it, it, you can't look good when your coach is putting you in predictable situations against the greatest defensive mind in professional football. I mean, in high school, you get shut out pulling that crap, let alone in, in, in professional football, in the biggest stage of them all. Um, people should rightfully be upset with McVay, and I don't feel like enough people are. I think too many people are pointing the finger at Jared Goff. And the last thing I want to hear as a player is that you weren't ready, that you didn't have us get prepared for the Super Bowl. No crap, well, dude. How many, well, how many times has McVay said this year that he got outcoached? He did it after the Bears game. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know if he said it after the Eagles game. No, he didn't. He didn't. But he, he did. Uh, he I, did. Don't think, I don't think he said it after the Saints game. No, but that's still, that's twice now you said you've gotten outcoached in one season. Right. That's going to put the doubt in the minds of some of your players. You right. need to knock you it know, off. You know, the thing is, it's the players who play the game. Yes, they get the calls in from the head coach or whoever, whoever's calling plays these days. We don't even know. I yeah. mean, there, there's a defensive coordinator on the Patriots who just got a head coaching job because he was the de facto defensive coordinator for, yeah. for New England. Uh, okay, sure, great. Miami, this is why you'll never overtake New England. But uh, whatever. Anyways, um... You know, the, the players still got to go out and perform. So no matter what play is called, okay, and we, you know, we saw it this year in Green Bay with McCarthy and Rodgers. McCarthy called the plays, and Rodgers just didn't make the plays. Yeah. And who got all the blame? Well, yeah. of course, you're not, you're not going to blame Aaron Rodgers because at 35 years old, he's still the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't see him in the Super Bowl this year or even in the last five years. No. So, um, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, the players deserve a lot of the blame because they're the ones out there performing on the field. They're the ones with the pads on. But then you also got a you also got a question the head coach. And and I was listening to the uh, Rams beat uh, writer on uh, ESPN one thousand today, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, I have no clue what that was." Like, no one does. Like, I, I, I don't know. She's like, they, they averaged 33 points a game and scored three in the Super Bowl. She's like, I have no clue what that was. No one does. And and the thing that blows me away is, yes, like Goff said, they wasted a great defensive effort. And I'll get to the defense, I promise. But But the thing that I just cannot wrap my mind around is, you know, Doug Peterson played this team last year with a backup quarterback and said, screw it. I'm throwing caution to the wind. I may never, he played like he may never get back there again. McVay coached like he plans on returning seven or eight more times. You don't, you don't use your first Super Bowl experience as a learning curve. You may never get back. I don't care how talented you are. The 2001 Rams never made it past the divisional playoff round ever again. Nothing is set in stone. When you're there, man, you got to throw it all out there. And that was the that was that was the worst conservative football I've ever seen. I've seen good conservative football before. We saw a lot of that in the 70s and the 80s. I I don't that wasn't it. Now, I want to touch on something. There's two Super Bowl records that were set here. The kick Eric already mentioned. The punt that was 27 yards and then rolled 30 yards or whatever it was. Um, it was funnier than crap. But um, I had said the Rams wouldn't give up but 17 points in this game. And they gave up 13. Lost in all of this is New England had no answer for the Rams defense. None. They get a great catch by Gronk, and that was it. The only one that was able to make plays is Julian Edelman, and I'm convinced it's because the the Rams decided to use Belichick's philosophy in Super Bowl 25. Okay, we're going to stop Gronk. We're going to stop the running game. We're going to suffocate Brady. We're going to let him have one option to go to the entire game. Let him throw it to him. And we'll tackle him when, when he gets the football. And by and large, the Rams did. Julian Oman didn't break an 80-yard touchdown reception. He didn't get past the defense for a big play. He made guys miss and he got extra yardage, sure. But that philosophy bared fruit. A lot of people don't realize in Super Bowl 25, the Giants' philosophy was let Thurman Thomas run wild. We're stopping the pass. Norwood makes that field goal and beats the Giants 22-20. Thurman Thomas is a Super Bowl MVP. The difference between the two is we didn't win this game. So the guy that we decided to just, that's your only option, is ended up being the Super Bowl MVP. And I, I can't question the minds or the philosophy because it worked. They held New England under the point projection I predicted. This defense was the most dominant I've seen by a losing team in a Super Bowl in a very long time. In a very long time. So much so that they set a Super Bowl record. And that record was the fewest points allowed by a losing team in Super Bowl history. I mean, if you got to hang your head on something, I guess you might as well try to find a silver lining. There's a silver lining for me. Lowest scoring Super Bowl in Super Bowl history and the fewest point totals given. I mean, this game was 3-0 going into the fourth quarter. It was 3-3 with seven and a half minutes to go in the game. I mean, that's amazing. I was joking, like, are we really going to see a 6-3 final? Is New England going to beat the Rams 6-3? And I don't know if I'm the only one, but a part of me was hoping that the Patriots would have gotten that first down so they wouldn't have kicked the field goal. And could have just taken a knee, and the Rams could have lost 10 to 3 and said, you know what, it's still a one score game. At least we have that to go on. Um, but they didn't. 
and then give credit, he barely makes the field goal. But this defense played outstanding. And Corey Littleton, Corey Littleton, if the Rams won this Super Bowl, would have been the MVP. I don't know how many tackles he had, but he was all over the field. And he had the interception. And he had a great pass deflection late in the third quarter on a, on a key third down. And he nearly he blocked a punt. Huh? He had 10 tackles. 10 tackles and a pick. And a damn near blocked punt. Um, if anybody out there still wants to question the Rams linebacking core, you're a drug addict and you need to seek psychiatrical help as well as drug help and get off the drugs. Because they played outstanding in this game. They shut down Gronk by and large. They shut down James White. They, for the most part, shut down Sony Michelle until the fourth quarter when he had a couple of big runs because the Rams defense had been on the field for what felt like 55 minutes of the game. Um, those linebackers were big time in this Super Bowl. Would you agree, Eric? Yes, they played well. So I don't think the Rams linebackers are a liability. And oh, by the way, Ebucon and Littleton, they're under contract for two more years. We don't have to worry about paying them with all of this talk about, you know, the salary cap. Now, I said my piece about the defense. I put this blame of this game on Sean McVay by and large with some responsibility on Goff because, yes, he missed a few throws. Um, that offensive line was horrendous. It was horrendous. And again... I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I just want to add this that I forgot to touch on to. That I thought there were a couple of uh, no-call pass interference penalties oh, yeah. against New England. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, was on, one was on Josh Reynolds. Um, I was like, oh, wow, how's, how's there no... There was a lot of, there was a lot of pushing, pushing back and forth on uh, with Reynolds, and they didn't call it. So, well... <laughs> I know there were some free snap penalties. I get it. Uh, some of them you actually have to call. Uh, I, I just didn't agree with the Roby Coleman. Um, that was horse crap. That was uh, horse. You know, the, the, the pass interferences that weren't called. Uh, okay, maybe they're just letting play, but then when they're calling other stuff, um, you kind of wonder. So I, I didn't think it was too uh, agarious. What was it, eight penalties on the Rams, only two on New England? Uh, no, I know New England had a, had three or more. Oh, did they? Felt like it was. Yeah. But that game felt weird all the way around. Look, the bottom line is I'm proud of the Ramley because there were things that we could have pointed to, especially that pass interference penalty and went, what the heck? But we're not. We're owning this loss like a boss because at the end of the day, we lost. There's still Saint fans crying. And, you know, you touched on yeah, a little bit, Eric. Funny. A 28 market share in in, uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, they uh, they didn't watch the game. Well, and that's fine. Um, but my my issue continues to be this is why the Rams will do better than New Orleans next year. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, after the game, the Rams acknowledge the loss and they're focused on next year. You still have Saint fans and Saint players crying after this game. We should have been there. We would have scored more than three points. Well, uh, to quote somebody that just said it on this show, um, no, you wouldn't have. As a matter of fact, you scored no points in the Super Bowl because you couldn't beat the team that got there. And you think you're gonna, you were going to win this game? With the way Drew Brees has been playing quarterback in the last month of the season, you want to pretend like that hasn't been an issue? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Um... I'm not going to apologize for my team being in its fourth Super Bowl. I'm not going to apologize for my team, you know, getting that experience. And I'm not going to apologize for the the performance that the Rams put on the field. Because at the end of the day, there's a couple things that I can really be proud of. Am I embarrassed that we are only the second team in Super Bowl history to score just three points? Yeah, I am. But here's a little fun fact for you all. That last team that only scored three points in the Super Bowl, first of all, they lost 24 to three. They ended up going undefeated the next year and winning the next two Super Bowls. I'm not saying the Rams are going to do that, but I am saying um, it's not bad company to be in 
when your name is next to the Miami Dolphins and this was your first Super Bowl. Um, but a lot of people in the Ramley, myself included, are trying to figure out what kind of coach Sean McVay is. And after talking with Kate, and she really did a good job, my wife, of calming me down and putting things in perspective. Um, I came to the realization we need to not worry about who Sean McVay is going to be like. Sean McVay is going to be Sean McVay. And for all we know, that could mean 12 Super Bowls. And in the 12th Super Bowl, the Rams are five, six and five. I'm sorry. Yeah, six and five. If I told you 30 years from now, Sean McVay would be in his 31st season as the Los Angeles Rams head coach, we would have gone to 12 Super Bowls. And in our 12th Super Bowl, win or lose, we were either going to end up six and six in those Super Bowls or seven and five. Would you take it? I know I would. 12 Super Bowls? I don't care if our record ended up being 6-6-12. Six and six and 12. I'll take it. Because it's hard to get there. And this organization's been there 11 times in its history. It's been there 9 times under this coaching regime. So, for all we know, McVay could end up being the next insert coach name here. But I'm choosing to just figure out okay, how do we improve on this? Where do we go from here? And I'm just going to let Sean McVay's career arc end where it's going to end and not try to compare it to somebody else. Because at the end of the day, it's, I think, a much more sane approach. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God, what other coaches that have been great coaches have lost the Super Bowl? I got to look through this statistic. I was killing myself yesterday. I don't need to do that. I'm sure love Don Shula, yeah, you know, Tom Landry, there's a lot of them. Um, I mean, it doesn't even, it's not even just uh, football related either. Yeah. Um, you know, Greg Popovich, um, yeah. you know, Hallis, Hallis lost a championship or two, Lombardi lost a championship or two. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, they're, all the great ones have, lost, have been there and lost. Yeah, even, even Bill Belichick. So, you know... You take it. Um, I, I don't like that the Rams are 0-3 against the two teams that have won the most Super Bowls. I don't like the fact that of New England's six Super Bowls, the Rams make up two of those. And of the Steelers' six, the Rams make up one of those. Um, it sucks. But if we're going to lose to somebody, I'd rather lose twice to the Patriots and once to the Steelers than be the team that lost to, uh, I don't know, Jacksonville if they ever win a Super Bowl, or be the team that lost to Tampa Bay like the Raiders are. Um, it's okay, company, I guess. At the end of the day, you know, I'm going to stay positive because this was a magical season. And they're a young team with a young coach that's going to learn from this experience. We have our quarterback of the future. We have our franchise quarterback. I believe that. Um, the only thing we got to focus on this offseason is, do we need to replace Whitworth and Sullivan, which I think we do, um, and what's wrong with Gurley? And keep in mind, how different could this game have been if we had Cooper Cup? Uh, you know, I've been thinking about that for the last two days. Yeah. Even before, even before the game started. Yeah. And, that, and it was funny because the, uh, the LAB writer uh, who follows the Rams mentioned that, and she's like, "Yeah, they were they were a lot different without Cup." Yeah, he'll be back next year, so that's like a big free agent pickup that we get. Uh, I just hope that he's okay, and uh, I think it's funny that the guy that caused the knee injury in Denver didn't get fined by the NFL, and it was a horse collar tackle that got penalized, but yet Nikel Roby Coleman gets penalized for a shoulder-to-helmet hit um, against New Orleans because the Saint fans cried until their tampons fell out. Um, I have no I have no delusions of grandeur. This, this loss hurts, but I'm optimistic to a degree. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, every year is different, and as a Ram fan, I saw the Rams get there twice – 
technically four times in my lifetime, but twice, three times in my older years. Um, the Rams got there in 01. They didn't get back until this year. Um, it's hard to get back. So we'll see if they're good enough. Um, it's going to take a lot of learning and it's going to take aggressive moves and it's going to take guys taking contract cuts. Um, I want to switch gears and talk about the Rams, you know, what they need to do looking towards next year. Um, I'm going to touch on the Patriots first uh, and wrap up with them and I'll let you say your piece on New England. I do want to say that, um, Congratulations to the Patriots. Congratulations to the Patriot fans. Six championships is elite company. There's only one other team that's been there, and that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, this New England Patriot team did something I didn't think they could do. Um, and Belichick just won a Super Bowl with his greatest defensive performance as a head coach with the worst defense he's ever had in his tenure in New England. And I can't, I can't state that enough. To do what he did in this Super Bowl with that defense, it's a shame he's not going to retire and just because that's a mic drop moment. He will never duplicate this performance ever again. He never will. And it's a real shame, uh, I think, that that will probably end up not being his last game because of what a way to go that would be. But if he does stick around, I, I think you could see Belichick still win another one or two Super Bowls, to be sure. Um, I don't think Tom Brady should come back. He looked every bit as awful as I said he was. Um, and if he comes back next year, I don't know how New England wins more than eight games. Because he's got a noodle arm, and it's going to look a lot like Peyton Manning in, on the Broncos Super Bowl 50 run. Um I don't know if you agree with that, but I really saw a depleted, um, incapable, and in many ways incompetent Tom Brady uh, throughout the game. But I don't know. Can you stop? Can you stop? Can you just? I, I would like you to rewind this and not even say that or say something different. Just stop. Seriously. Just stop. You didn't learn your lesson at the beginning of this year. You didn't learn your lesson when you said you wanted the Patriots, that you were rooting for the Patriots to play them in the Super Bowl, and you're still not learning your lesson now. Knock it off. Say that the Patriots are great. They have a great franchise. Great. Whatever. That's fine. They beat you. Um, the Patriots, Brady and Belichick will be back. And don't discount that Brady and Belichick will be back in the playoffs, win the division, and somehow maybe even get to another Super Bowl. I don't know. We don't know what it's like. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they need to do though. Get a decision now from Gronk within the next couple of weeks, and if he does retire, okay, go get yourself a tight end. Trade for one, draft one, doesn't matter. Just go get go get yourself a tight end who can who can catch the ball. They don't need a running back. I mean, Michelle Burkhead and and White are, are just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard I've heard rumors that. By the beginning of next season, Josh Gordon might be reinstated, and I know the Patriots are keeping tabs on him, so he might resign there. I don't know. Go get yourself a wide receiver who's not going to cause you trouble. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know, I know they're looking at uh, Tom Brady's replacement, but uh, you know, go get yourself a wide receiver, and at the end of the first round, could be a right picking for Nikhil Harry. Maybe. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I don't think he's going to be in the NFL. And just because I said the Patriots are going to go 8-8, eight and eight, that didn't mean I wasn't picking them to win the division. If the Patriots go 8-8, eight and eight, they'll win their division by three or four games. Just saying. I mean, the NFC East is pathetic. I'm not saying the Patriots aren't going to make the playoffs. And yes, I did predict New England to go to the Super Bowl. Um, and was rooting for him to go, well, I didn't predict him to go to the Super Bowl. I did predict him to make the playoffs this year. I didn't, I did pick him to win the division, I think, in the beginning of the year. I'll have to go back. I at least know I picked him to make the playoffs and knew that they would make a playoff run. But I'm not going to apologize for the fact that Tom Brady has looked average to mediocre all year long. With the exception of the conference championship game, where I thought he really played great, it doesn't mean he's not the greatest quarterback of all time. It just means, Eric, you can't deny Father Time is starting to show up around Tom Brady. 
Did you see anything? Well, I, 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 I don't, I don't deny it. But, okay. You know, when Brady doesn't have to throw 25 yards down the field, and he's more accurate throwing, you know, a five-yard pass to make it second to five is just as good as a five-yard run. There's no question. And I'm not saying he isn't capable of doing it again. I just think he's becoming more and more of a liability to that offense. And as soon as defenses decide to use the Rams' blueprint that they gave everyone in this Super Bowl, um, granted, not everyone has the Ram players. I understand that. But it's still a blueprint that teams can utilize. I think that the Patriots... Don't want to do what the Chargers have done. They don't want to do what the Giants have done. They need to find a replacement because if he retires and you're stuck with Hoyer as your quarterback, are you really going to pick New England to win the division? Well, he already he already said before the game that he wasn't retiring. I know. So that's why they need to find his replacement. And I'm not going to sit here and and sugarcoat. I'm honest no matter what. I own it. We lost to New England. But I'm proud to say we didn't lose because of Tom Brady. We lost because of Bill Belichick. And if it, if a head coach could have gotten an MVP, it should have been him. But I'm glad Julian Edelman got the MVP because that guy played a great game. But I think the Rams schemed for him to be the option. Knowing he was going to hurt him but making sure no one else did. I think Gronk is going to retire. If he does come back, I don't know that you can rely on him. Um, And not everybody can get the ball out as quickly as Brady, which is another reason why I really think they need to find the successor. So he could teach him the art of getting the ball out there. Provided Tom Brady's willing to actually work with another quarterback and actually teach him. Um, We know Aaron Rodgers doesn't and won't and refuses. So that only hurts the franchise even more. Um, But we'll see. Um, Yeah, you're right, Eric. I did want New England. And we held them 13 points. I I just, I did not expect Jeff Fisher to be our head coach for a game. And I did not expect that out of Belichick with the players that he had on that defense. And I tip my hat. I give credit to the organization. Everything you said before, they are not only a great organization, they are the greatest organization in professional football today. Um, They have now reached an elite class of what I call the elite four. The Packers, the Bears, now the Patriots, and the 49ers. Um, The 49ers I put in that elite group because they were great for two and a half decades. Um, well, two decades. Um, and, and that's tough to do. There's not a lot of franchises that can say they were consistently great for two decades. Um, Pittsburgh, New England, San Francisco, Green Bay, and Chicago. That's it. Those are your elite four. It used to be the elite three, but now it's the elite four. And, and, and New England's earned every minute of it. I, I will take nothing away from New England for this win. But I'm not going to sit here and pound the drum that, oh, the Patriots and Tom Brady. That was the Patriots and Bill Belichick this go-around. And the Rams proved it. So, is he the greatest quarterback of all time? I've already said that. I don't feel like I need to keep saying it. Um, There will be a black eye on this organization for a very long time. Because Dick Buckus wouldn't have done what Bill Belichick did in 2000 through 2004. Uh, Vince Lombardi wouldn't have done it. Chuck Knoll wouldn't have done it. George Hallis wouldn't have done it. So, you know, there is that. And uh, I'm sure Patriot fans are fine with living with that stigma. Um, because it doesn't change the fact that they are an elite organization. Um, your take? I mean... It's going to be a very, very long winter of the day that everybody decides to retire and, and, and move on and, and whatnot. And, I mean, you know, the, uh, 
Patriots, Red Sox, Celt- uh, Celtics, and Bruins have 12 titles since 2001. I think it's time for a new city to uh, capture that. It, uh, you know, I know uh, I said earlier, that, or I said before on the show, that the Rams or the Bears have been following the uh, the Rams' footprint a little bit, and I mean. Rams, Bears, I, I wouldn't mind going to the Super Bowl other times and winning six or seven of them and, and being the next hated uh, franchise. I, I wouldn't care. Yeah, I, yeah I, I would absolutely love it. Well, the Rams are already, for some reason, public enemy number one. Um, maybe because they have L.A. next to their name. Um, maybe because they think that the Rams actually officiate football games. I don't know. But um, I'm proud of this team. And I, I, I think the Rams and Bears are going to be um, playing each other a lot uh, over the next decade or so. Um, and it won't all be regular season games either. As far as the Rams go, guys, be proud. I told you this. You don't get here very often. It's going to be a long off season because there's some rebuilding that has to happen. There's some retooling that has to go on. But there's also some learning that has to happen here. The Rams have got to figure out what mistakes were made and not repeat them. And um, not have a hangover. That's hard to do, man. It's hard to do. New England lost Super Bowl and went back and won. Um, Atlanta lost the Super Bowl and went back to the playoffs. Um, Seattle didn't. So... Uh, Carolina did uh, go back to the playoffs after going to the Super Bowl, so I believe they did. I think I'm thinking of the same team. It's 53, so 52 would have been last year. 51. Yeah, 50. Yeah, so that was that's right. Um, I don't know. The, the, the Super Bowl hangover is a real thing. we got to see what happens. Uh, we're in rarefied air, folks. Only one other team's been held without a touchdown in a Super Bowl. And only three teams. Um, well, that's not true. There's been quite a few teams <laughs> that have been held under 10 points. Uh, Redskins twice. Dolphins. Vikings like three times. Um, Giants. Broncos. Giants. Broncos. No, not the Broncos. Oh, yeah. Eight. That's oh, right. Eight. That's right. So, I mean... That isn't as rarefied as what we experienced. So we'll have to see what happens. Huh? Baltimore Colts. Baltimore Colts. Yeah. 16 to 7. So, I don't know, Eric. Parting thoughts on the Rams. Get up healthy. Uh, Figure out who you want to keep on defense. Mm. Really, and just just replace the coach that you're losing. Uh, Zach Taylor was named uh, Bengals head coach today, so... Not sure how much he really had in in, in the Rams uh, in the Rams offense, but you know he was the quarterback coach. I, you know I don't know how big of a deal that was. I think there was more to McVay and Goff more than anything, obviously, because he's the head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Zach Taylor. Good luck in Cincinnati. I think you're going to need it. Um, but no, I just figure out if you want to keep Fowler, if you want to keep Sue. You know how you know what your situation is with the luxury cap. Um, and, and go from there. Well, I know Fow- Fowler said he wants to come back and he'd take a discounted rate, so that's good. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be an interesting offseason. Well, Eric, we're officially parting off for the off season, so you can go back to your to your Bears. So I will say horns up. Bear down. Go Rams! See you later.